Father, this morning we confess that great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for being a faithful God. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever. You are such a reliable God. Your promises and words are true forever. We can rely upon you. We can depend, depend upon you. All that we will ever need for a glorious life, you have already provided. It's not that when we came to the world that you now begin to run around to see how you can help us. You've already completed your work of provision even before creation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We may not know what is coming in the next season, but we know that your provision is very sure. What a faithful God you are. A God that will never deny his word. We return all the glory to you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to gather together under the auspices of your faithfulness and the anointing. To hear from you, to be instructed, to be empowered, to be helped and strengthened. Thank you, Jehovah. Blessed, 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 O Lord, be your holy name. This morning, I ask that you will take us through again today. Take us through the word. Take us through the scriptures. Open our eyes of understanding. Inform us, correct us, empower us, encourage us, instruct us, and feed us. That we will not remain the same. That your word will transform our lives and we will live a better life and we will become a better representative of God's purpose on the earth. Thank you, Lord, for what you have mapped out for this mentoring school and thank you, Lord, for what you have been doing since we started and we are thanking you in advance of what you will do again today. Great Holy Spirit, take over this session. Let it not be by the arrangement of man. Let it be by your divine operation. Let the word come with power and grace. We ask that Jesus will be seen and glorified. And lives and destinies will be enhanced and transformed. Help us at the end of this to be a better representative of Jesus on the earth. Thank you, Father. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you glory. Online, on ground, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon every word. Bringing healing, bringing deliverance, bringing help and strengthening. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Can I hear a better amen? Can I hear a more purposeful amen? Good morning, everybody. It's also a privilege to be here. I want to thank God for what God is doing. Just like I always say, the best way to live is for you to keep your focus on what God is doing. Be a follower of what God is doing. Be a follower of what God is doing. It may not appear to men that God is doing something, but in every meeting that God has called, he is doing something. So don't follow your sight. Follow what God is doing. In your life and on the earth. And I pray that you will not miss out in divine operation. In the name of Jesus. Tell somebody, take yourself serious. I said you should tell somebody. Tell somebody, take yourself serious. I didn't say you should talk to yourself. Talk to somebody. Take yourself serious. Because God is serious. I'm praying that today will be another time of encounter. Encounter with the word of life. In the name of Jesus. Now, this morning, I want to quickly do some little, little teachings. Um... My intention is that we're going to have two sessions, but I'm going to match the two sessions into one long session. Is that okay? <laughs> I'll match the two sessions into one long session. So once I'm through, then we'll be through. Is that okay? 
the way we arrange it before is that we will have the first session, we have break, and then we'll come back, we we'll take second session. But I'm matching it up together. So are you ready? All right. I want us to read Matthew chapter 5. The focus is verse 13 to 16. That is the passage we have been studying since December. When we had mentoring school in December. And for the December mentoring school, we were able to go through verse 13. So in this mentoring school, we have been focusing on verse 14, verse 15. But by the grace of God, before we go today, I believe God is going to help us to conclude on verse 16. So I'm going to read from verse 14. So I'm going to read verse 14, verse 15, and verse 16. And um, we must be ready to write very fast. Are you there? Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, where I'm going to start today I want you to write the peculiarities of the believer's life. The peculiarities of the, the believer's life. That's where I'm starting this morning. The peculiarities of the believer's life. If you are a believer, how peculiar is your life? How unique is your life? How special is your life? How different is your life? Is that okay? You may go to school, you may not go to school. That doesn't stop it. Your life is still peculiar. Because most of the time, we rate ourselves by our physical achievement. And that is not correct. Is somebody here any minute? That is not to say that you will not achieve things in the physical. But whatever you achieve in the physical, don't ever let it be the true measure of your personality. Are you here any minute? It is the Gentile uh, practice that must not affect you in the kingdom. I don't see myself now basically as a graduate. I went to school. I read microbiology. I have master's degree and things like that. That's not how I see myself. Because if I see myself like that, I will limit my destiny. I will limit my potential. The totality of who I am has nothing to do with microbiology. Is somebody hearing me now? What I represent in destiny has nothing to do with microbiology. Microbiology is just a face to a platform to get me to where I'm going. Is somebody hearing me now? It's just an, microbiology is just an opportunity for God to expose my mind, train my mind, so that my mind can be strong enough to receive what he wants to bring from heaven. So, in the kingdom, it is your spirit development that is foremost. But that doesn't stop you from reading, from getting achievement in the physical. But it is a mistake for you to now begin to evaluate yourself primarily based on what you are in the flesh. Is somebody hearing me now? That's why some people are proud. That's why some people are not becoming what God wants them to become. What you have become before you know God is not enough to describe what you will become after you have known God. Is somebody hearing me now? God wants to make something out of your life. So if you are not careful, what you have become by yourself will stop you from becoming what God wants to make out of you. Many people are in that dilemma today. That they are in church, but 
they never become what God wants to make out of them. Because they are too full of themselves. They are too focused on what they have become by themselves. I hope you can hear me. Don't ever make that mistake. How many of you know Paul was a lawyer? A foremost one by that, by every standard. Studied under Gamaliel. Popular, foremost, political, connected to high places. But is that what we remember Paul for today? Answer me. You know, your contribution to life is a function of your purpose in God. Not a function of your education or physical. Thing. Your contribution to life is a function of your purpose in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So don't make the mistake of trying to define yourself or evaluate yourself based on physical achievement. Physical achievement. That's why you see some people, once they begin to achieve, they don't, they don't submit to divine processing again. That's a mistake that some people are making. Once they begin to achieve in the physical, they don't submit to divine processing again. I believe a time is coming that a governor of the state will be a choir master in our church. You didn't believe it. <laughs> it looked bogus to you. Are you hearing me now? The time is coming that a vice chancellor of a university will teach Sunday school. You didn't believe me. <laughs> Let your amen be strong. <laughs> you know why? Because people, when they begin to achieve in the physical, they think that's the end. They now begin to define their status based on their physical achievement. That's not correct. You hear what I say now. Define your status by your kingdom identity. That is when your potentials become unlimited. Whatever you have become in the flesh is just a platform for you to become all that God wants to make out of you. When you see yourself that way, there will be no room for pride. And there will be no limitation to your climbing and rising in life. Are you hearing me now? As high, the higher you go, the humbler you will become. The humbler you will become. And the humbler you will become, the more God will push things to you. I'm telling you the truth. Are you hearing me now? That's why you see when pe people that have this understanding, the higher they go, the simpler they are. In everything, they are very simple. Because they know that the things of this world are very e ephemeral. Are you hearing me now? Between the twinkle of an eye, death can come. And when it comes, every achievement is wasted. The houses, shh, the, the cars, gone. The degrees, wasted. Nobody can use the certificate. Even if you have a son that is in your field, he has to fight for his own degree. Am I correct? When, when they say professor died, do you know what died? A whole library is dead. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? That? But that's the end. It will, have been, it will be very, very, it will be a tragedy of monumental proportion if all that, is, all that is defining the life of that person is just his physical achievement. Tell somebody there is something more in God. It's earlier for, especially for those of you who are young, I encourage you to rise, achieve, be diligent, work hard, Read, study, achieve, but don't ever let it define you. There is more in God. What God wants to make of you is bigger, 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 bigger than whatever you have become by yourself. Did you hear me now? Very, very important. That's where I'm starting today. The peculiarities of the believer's life. The believer's life is peculiar. And it must be so. Now, let's read Matthew 5.14 again. I, I want to ask you, what comes to your heart when Jesus was, when that scripture is being read? When Jesus spoke that word? Look at me. And I want you to imagine Jesus is standing in front of you. 
Because when Jesus was speaking this word, it wasn't documented that time. It was just like I'm speaking to you. Are you hearing me now? And view yourself in the original audience that Jesus was talking to. Are you setting your imagination now? Imagine that Jesus is standing in front of you because that was exactly how it came to be. And look at yourself as one of the original audience that Jesus was speaking to. And let the Holy Spirit help you to gauge the mind of Jesus. Are we together? Now, he said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Look up. What do you think Jesus is saying? Hello? Hello? Beyond the words of that statement. When Jesus stood before his disciples and said, ye are the light of the world. And the people he's talking to, there is no permanent secretary among them. The people he was talking to, there is no professor among them. Because these are the things that people think is important in the world. The people Jesus was talking to, there is no chief executive officer of a bank there. The people Jesus was talking to, in the original audience, no senator was there. No governor was there. Hello? No graduate was there. They were common, ordinary men. Predominantly fishermen. <laughs> Peasant farmers. Low cadre in the societal structure of, in the structure of life. Common people. Somebody say common people. Talk to me. Say common people. He wasn't talking to millionaires. Because when you read the Bible, you must let your imaginative sense kick in. Because if you don't have a power of imagination, you won't understand the Bible. And if you don't understand the Bible from the original context, you won't be able to apply correctly. Because one would have expected that in the audience that Jesus was speaking to, that would be the timber and caliber type of men. The cream de la cream of society. The captains of industries. The great politicians. The generals in the army. The egghead in the academia. Hello, somebody. One would have expected that those were the people that will form the audience that Jesus... When Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. But none of these people was there was talking to common people. Common people. Look at this young man now. Eh? Look at this young man now. This year, he's in mentoring school. Am I correct? If I'm not a serious pastor, and see beyond his present now, and look at his destiny, I am ministering to his destiny. I'm not ministering to his today. I'm ministering to his future. If I'm not a serious pastor, I would think that uh, nobody came to mentoring school this year. But can I say nobody came to mentoring school? Didn't you come? Some, are you not somebody? Are you here in Mena? Because most of the things people are looking for are the things that will kill them and kill their future. God is not looking for big, big, big men. God is looking for small, 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 small people that will, that will be a child enough to receive the truth of the kingdom so that he, God, can show his bigness in them. Is somebody here in a minute? Ordinarily, people will be excited when you have great people in their church. And most of the time, these great people, these big people are the people that will never submit to the divine process. And most of the time, they are the people that will wreck what God is doing. Because when you get to a stage in life that what you have become is something to you, you will never give room enough for what God wants to make of you. 
and the purpose of God in that life will be truncated. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? But in 10 years to come, if this young man followed all my teachings, in 10 years to come, you will be surprised what you would have become in God. Because once you are becoming something in God, you will automatically be becoming something major in life. Is somebody hearing me now? You can't be living your life by the principles of the kingdom and be a backbencher in life. No. No. Anywhere you are, when you are walking the principles of the kingdom, you will become the leader of men. That is the truth. That's the mystery. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. So today now I'm ministering to him. And I'm happy. Are you hearing me now? So you are, when Jesus stood before the people and said, ye are the light of, of the world. He didn't say ye are the light of Jerusalem. Did he say so? <laughs> so Jesus was not raising local champion. He was raising global champion. Now, these are the things I think about when I read the Bible. He didn't say, ye are the light of Bethlehem. Ye are the light of Galilee. Ye are the light of, uh, of uh, what? <laughs> Praise God. Remind me of one other city in the Bible. Ye are the light of Capernaum. No, he didn't say that. He said, ye are the light of what? The world. The program of God is global. The plan of God is generational. The God we serve is not a small God. He's a big God. So if he said, ye are the light of the world, and he was talking to fishermen, peasant, locator people, then he's saying something that they must understand. What they must understand is what we must understand today. That's why I said, Never rate yourself based on where you are now in the flesh or who you are now in the flesh. Let God do what he wants to do in your life. Ye are the light of the world. The declaration of Jesus is revealing certain things. And I will tell you four of them. Have you written the peculiarities of the believer's life? Fundamentally, the declaration of Jesus is saying that the believer is peculiar. Somebody say, I am peculiar. Somebody say, I am special. Say, I am unique. Say, I am different. Are you hearing me now? So when he say, ye are the light of the world, he's simply saying four things. Number one, that the life of a believer is not common. It's not general. It's not normal. If you are a believer, you can personalize it. When Jesus says, you are the light of the world, he's saying that your life is not common. Your life is not general. Your life is not normal. Is somebody hearing me now? Say after me, my life is not common. My life is not general. My life is not normal. Once you are a believer, that's the thing that Jesus is communicating. Say, so you begin to see yourself in the light of his declaration. If my life is not common, if my life is not general, if my life is not normal, then what exactly is it? Is it? Write this down. When Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, he's simply saying, the life of a believer is peculiar. Is peculiar. Is distinctive. 
is distinctive. He's capable of setting righteous standards. He's capable of setting righteous standards. You are never in the class of any unbeliever. Because you know what they don't know. What do you know that they don't know? You know the Lord. You know the word of God. You know the Holy Ghost. They don't know it. They don't know it. Is somebody here in a minute? And I'm praying that you will consciously begin to order your thinking in that line from today. Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. The meaning is that if you are not here, this world is full of darkness. Isn't that the meaning? He's simply saying, if you are not here, they won't succeed here. When they say the cream de la cream of society, you are the cream de la cream of the world. Remove you here. This place is jinx forever. So with this understanding, you cannot afford to be, to live, number one, don't live a casual life. Don't live a casual life. The light of the world cannot afford to be a casual life. Cannot afford to live a casual life. I'm teaching in such a way that I want you to write down some of these points. Don't live a careless life. Don't live a careless life. You are the light of the world. You are peculiar. You can't live. You cannot afford to live a careless life. When you live carelessly, you are undermining your identity. Don't live a common life. Don't live a common life. Everybody is doing it, so I have to do it. That's common. No. Everybody is talking like that, so I have to talk like that. No. Everybody, that is the vogue. That is how they dress. I have to dress. No. Everybody is thinking like this, so I have to think like that. No. Don't live a common life. Don't live a cheap life. Don't live a cheap life. Is somebody hearing me now? Live a covenant-minded life. Speak from that revelation. Live a covenant-minded life. You have a covenant with God. Live from that covenant mentality. So what is happening to them in the world can't happen to you. But it will keep happening to you until you understand this consciousness. Live a covenant-minded life. Live a careful life. Live a committed life. Be committed to God. Be committed to the purpose of God. Read life with the goggle of the purpose of God. Interpret events with the perspective of the purpose of God. Be a follower of divine operations. What God is doing on the earth is to be your major concern. That's what you follow. Live a sober life. Live a sober life. That is the kind of life that measure up to your identity in God. When Jesus says, ye are the light of the world. Is calling for a sober life. That you are not common, you are peculiar. You are different, you are unique. Live a consistent life. Be consistent in godliness. Be consistent in righteousness. Be consistent in well-doing. Live a sacrificial life. 
live a sacrificial life. This consciousness is what will bring critical and godly difference into your life as a believer. That is the first thing that Jesus was saying. When he stood before them and said, ye are the light of the world. What is he saying? Your life is special. Hello. That's the first thing he was saying. Your life is special. Your life is unique. You are not expected to live a common life. You are not expected to live a general life. You are not expected to live a normal life. Live differently. Don't live common life. Don't live a cheap life. Be sober. Have that sense of difference. This consciousness will bring a godly difference into your life. The statement of Jesus is telling you, you are not common, you are not general, you are not normal. You are peculiar, you are distinctive, you are capable of setting righteous standards. When he say, ye are the light of the world, it's like he said, you are the leading light. You set the standard. But, beloved, how many believers understand what I'm teaching this morning? We now live in a generation that the so-called believers are trying to catch up with the world. <laughs> we copy the world. We emulate them. We are interested in them when they are supposed to be emulating us and running after us. We are running after their pace. When they are supposed to be running after our pace. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Number two. When Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. What is he saying? He's simply saying that your life should be so radiant... That others will be able to easily take a good cue from. Your life should be so radiant that others should be able to take a good cue from. That your life must be a mentoring school for many others. That they see life through your life. How many of you are thinking, how many of you are understanding what I'm sharing with you this morning? When he says, you are the light of the world, he's simply saying you are the standard setter. You are the pace setter. Are you hearing me now? You are the trailblazer. Your life must be radiant enough that other people can take a cue from. You must live in such a way that if other people don't have Bible to read, reading your life will get them to a safe destination in eternity. That's the meaning. Your life must be so useful to others and influential in the positive way of on others that they will rejoice to take after it. Let me put it in one word or in one sentence. You must live a life that will be safe to emulate. Write it down. Don't ever forget it. I believe this is the standard that the Holy Ghost is setting for everyone who are attending this year mentoring school. That is the standard that the Holy Ghost is setting for us. Let it be your target that as from today, I will live a life that will be safe to emulate. How many of you agree with me that not everybody's life is safe to emulate? Do you agree with me? Not everybody's life is safe to emulate. Some people cannot emulate their father's life. Some people cannot emulate their mother's life. Some people cannot emulate their pastor's life. Some people cannot emulate their friend's life. Some people cannot emulate their sibling's life. Because it is not safe to emulate. 
And if you emulate them, what, what happened to them will happen to you. And you don't want to experience what happened to them. But God is saying, you are the light of the world. Live in such a way that it will be safe to emulate your life. I remember years ago, I finished Bible study. We used to have one elder in our church that time who was misbehaving. And I had to suspend him. And he didn't learn any lesson. He was still misbehaving. You know, some people try to bring physical age into divine oppression. That's where they miss the purpose of God for their lives. As at that time, he was a grandfather. You are grandfather in your house. If you misbehave in the house of God, you will be disciplined. So that other people will learn. We will not allow your misbehavior to become a pandemic. And this man misbehaved in the presence of people in the church. And when I wanted to discipline him, I didn't do it privately. I did it in the very presence of the people that he misbehaved. So that that misbehavior will not become a pandemic. <laughs> and he was angry. And he came to me and said, Daddy, I'm angry with you. I said, what did I do? He said, you should have called me privately at least and spoken to me and we understand. I said, did you misbehave privately? Hello, somebody. Oh, hello. I said, did you misbehave privately? He couldn't answer me. You misbehave publicly. And I discipline you publicly. I corrected you publicly so that other people can learn that this is not a lawless house. This is not a lawless church. And I like to do that. The top officers must be well disciplined. Any of our pastors, if you misbehave publicly, I will discipline you publicly so that you won't destroy other people because of your sickness. When some people become too big for a church to discipline, that church will scatter. God will leave that church. Is somebody here know what I'm saying now? If you mess up publicly, they deal with you publicly. So that others can learn. So he got angry. And he was misbehaving even more. And I remember that day, I finished Bible study. I was exhausted. I sat down. And then mommy called him. I sat beside mommy. Mommy was sitting beside me. And I was listening to their conversation. But I didn't contribute. Mommy asked a question. And said, sir. Would you want anybody in this church. To follow your example. To behave like you are behaving. When I had that question. I became interested in his answer. And he said, no. Mommy said, so you know that your example is a bad example. And that's why you don't want anybody to be like you. He said, why are you now doing this? When Jesus was saying, you are the light of the world. You know what he's saying? Live a life that people can emulate. Hello, somebody. When you are living a life that people, that it is not safe for people to emulate, you are living a wrong life. Before you do anything, ask yourself, is it safe for others to do the same thing I'm doing? So that's what Jesus was saying. Live a life that will be safe to emulate. Is that okay? Now, let's read some scriptures. See the life that God wants you to live. Proverbs chapter 4. Everybody open Proverbs chapter 4.
I read verse 18. I want us to read it as loud as we can. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Are you there? Are we together? Proverbs 4, 18. One, two, go. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Look up. May this be your life. There is no darkness in the life of a believer. There is no sin. There is no iniquity. There is no ungodly example. There is no unrighteous example. The path of the just is as the what? The shining light. That was what Jesus was saying. That's how peculiar your life is. Or your life should be. That shining, somebody say more and more. That is where, that is, I believe that is the Old Testament version of from glory to glory. Somebody say more and more. More and more. He didn't say more and less. Are you hearing me now? Ah, kishe wo gudu gudu da wai wai. Ah, kishe kushe kakbe jusile. More and more and more. Somebody say more and more. More and more. What sense does that give you? That will keep getting better? Getting better? Getting better? Getting better? Getting better? We grow. We are dynamic. We are mature. We are moving on. We are moving from glory to glory. Getting better. Getting better. Getting better. Getting better. Becoming a stronger believer. A more prosperous believer. You're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You don't get to a place where you say, I want to look back. No. Hello, somebody. We are moving forward. Moving forward. Moving upward. Moving forward. Moving upward. Getting better. Getting better. Ten years to come, you are better than this. Twenty years to come, you are better than this. Those who saw you last, when they see you again, they see you move forward. Spiritually, physically, in every way, you are getting better. That is your life. That's your life. That's the kind of life. Don't you want to emulate that kind of life? Hello? Did you get what I'm saying now? Hmm. Daniel chapter 12. I did verse 3. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. I want us to read together. Are you there? So some of you will have to learn how to read, open the Bible very fast. Are you there now? Now, one, two, go. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for one month. For what? Forever and ever. You see that? That's the life that God wants you to be, to have. When Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, he simply said, live a life that will be safe to emulate. Is somebody here in a minute? I want you to look at Luke. Chapter 12, verse 35. We're going to read it together again. Luke 12, 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Are you there? Okay, let's read together. Let your loins be guided about and your light what? Burning. If you understand tense, English tenses correctly. Does he say, is he talking about a life or a light that has born in the past? What is he talking about? 
a light that is burning, 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 burning. So when Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, that's what he's saying. Look at John chapter 5. I want us to read verse 35. John 5.35. Are you there? Okay. Let's read together. He was a burning and a shining light and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Jesus was talking about John the Baptist here. And that is the description of the average life of a believer. Let your life be a burning and a shining light. And let people be willing to rejoice in your light. And I want to pray for you that may people be willing to rejoice in your light. That when you come, you come with light that brings joy to the, to the people. In the name of Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 6. We are reading together again. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Are we together? One, two, go. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What a word. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, that's what he's telling you. You remember? What's the first thing he was telling us? That your life is distinctive, special, unique, peculiar. Your life is not supposed to be a general life. Your life is not supposed to be a common life. Your life is not supposed to be a normal life. You must not be careless. You must be sober. Be vigilant. Your life must be capable of setting righteous standards. And then number two, it must be safe to emulate your life. It must be radiant such that easily people can take a good cue from your life. Number three. This number three has four points. When Jesus says, ye are the light of the world, he's simply saying that your life is peculiar. Am I correct? That you are different. You are peculiar. And why are you peculiar? Number one, write it. The believer is not of the night. He's not of darkness. That's why your life is peculiar. You are not of the night. You are not of darkness. You are appointed to obtain salvation. You are not appointed to rot. That's why your life is peculiar. And it is the peculiarity of your life that Jesus was communicating to you when he said, ye are the light of the world. I want you to personalize it. Say, I am not of the night. I am not of darkness. I'm appointed to obtain salvation by Jesus Christ. I am not appointed to rot. Let's go again. I am not of the night. I am not of darkness. I am appointed to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. I am not appointed to rot. That's how, that's how peculiar your life is. 
Write First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. Let's read it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. There are things that you have to see yourself in the Bible. So your conviction can be scriptural. Are you there? First Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's read from verse 5. One, two, go. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. What he's saying is that let us not be careless. Oh. He didn't say you shouldn't sleep in the night. Oh. <laughs> Hello. It means let us not be careless. Let us not be slack. Let us not be insensitive of the sinfulness of the world we are living in. Let, he simply said let's be careful. Let's be sober. Let's be vigilant. Let's be sensitive. That's what he's saying. So, let's read verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to rot, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's who you are. So when Jesus stood before his original audience and he was saying, ye are the light of the world, he was saying a lot more things. Is somebody here know what I'm saying now? Say, say after me again. I am a believer. I am not of the night. I am not of darkness. I am appointed to salvation. I am not appointed to rot. I am of the day. I am not of the night. I am the light of the world. My life is peculiar. If this is what you can walk away with as a consciousness from today, your life will not remain the same. You will be a better representative of Jesus on the earth. By knowledge and by grace. Is somebody here in a minute? 3-2 uh, now. 3-2. Why is your life peculiar? Write this down. I am ordained to show forth the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into God's marvelous light. I am ordained to show forth the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into God's marvelous light. That's who you are. You are ordained to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Did you get that? That life cannot be a common life. That life cannot be a normal life. That life cannot be a general life. That life is a covenant-minded life. That life is a special life. It's a unique life. It's a peculiar life. Look at First Peter. Chapter 2. Verse 9. For many years, most believers have not been shown who they really are. That's why their ministry has been missing. Don't forget, the theme of this mentoring school is the identity and the ministry of a kingdom breed. You remember that. Once your identity is clear to you, it will be easy for you to flow with your ministry. If you know who you are, you will be able to do what you are supposed to do. 
First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Can we read together? That's a rather popular scripture. Am I correct? One, two, go. But ye are... Now, look up. When the Bible says ye here, does it not sound like ye are the light of the world? Hello? Does it not sound like that? All right? <laughs> because everything the apostle wrote in the epistle is the amplification of everything said in the gospel. Everything Jesus said in the gospel. Everything the apostle wrote in their epistle is the amplification of everything Jesus said in the gospel. So Peter was taking a cue from the statement of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Ye are the light of the world. In that same cue, in that same flow, in that same understanding. Calling us again to our identity. He's now saying in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. One to go, everybody. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. How many of you now see the seriousness of the prayer I ask you to pray? That may your life not be a disappointment to God's expectation. God has placed us high there with a responsibility. He didn't just talk about title. He also spoke about our ministry. The same thing happened in 1 Peter 2.9. Yeah, a chosen generation. That's your identity. A royal priesthood. That's your identity. Holy nation. That's your identity. Peculiar people. That's your identity. He didn't stop like that. After the identity, the ministry follow. The responsibility follow. That is the justification for the identity. Did you hear me now? God is not looking for tight two carriers. He's looking for people who will live the real life. Why are you a chosen generation? Why are you a royal priesthood? Why are you a holy nation? Why are you a peculiar people? Is it for fun? Is it for, for um, self-aggrandizement? No. That ye should shoot forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's your ministry. When you do not do that ministry, you undermine your identity. I believe somebody is getting something in this mentoring school. Very, very important. Very, very important. 3-3 three, three now. I hope you could, you could still follow that. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, ye are the light of the world, he's simply saying, you are peculiar. Why are you peculiar? I want you to take note of this. I am ordained to live a life of fellowship with God and with fellow believers. That's why you are peculiar. I am ordained to live a life of fellowship with God and fellowship with believers. I'm not ordained to have fellowship with the work of darkness. I'm not ordained to have fellowship with iniquity. I'm not of, of, ordained to have fellowship with, with Satan. I'm not ordained to have fellowship with ungodly people. In fellowship, there is interaction. Fellowship is spiritual. We can gather without having fellowship. Hello, somebody. Eh? We can gather like this without having fellowship. So most churches are just gathering. No fellowship is taking place. Fellowship is when spiritual interaction is taking place. That's why you must be careful about your relationship. If you are going to retain your identity as the light of the world. What you have fellowship with will either undermine your identity or empower your identity. What are you fellowshipping with? Every day. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Who are you relating with? Who are you fellowshipping with? Does it, does it enhance your identity as a light? Or does it undermine or make a mockery of that identity? Who are the people you are fellowshipping Because what you fellowship with, what you fellowship with and who you fellowship with is very important to 
your identity as the light of the world. Say after me, I am ordained to live a life of fellowship with God and with fellow believers. That's why my life is peculiar. Hello, somebody. Say again after me, I am ordained to live a life of fellowship with God and with fellow believers. That's why your life is peculiar. Look at First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. Amen. Are we still together? I read from verse 5 to 7. I want us to read together. First John chapter 1. Now, the mentoring school of this year is very thorough about the kind of life that you should be living. And the kind of life you should be living comes as a function of your understanding of who you really are. If you don't know who you are, you don't know the kind of life you should be living. You'll be living anyhow. And that's not the plan of God. First John chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. Are you there? Let's read together. One, two, go. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Do you understand now? You know, the Bible says two cannot work together except they agree. When people say I'm a child of God, I laugh. Because most people that are saying that don't understand what it means to be a child of God. It means that whatever is found in God is found in your life. Is life found in God? I sang a song for you. At, was it yesterday? Or the day before yesterday? Hello? Do you know it's possible for a father to look at his son and say he's a bastard? What do you think has happened? He's a father. But you just look at his son and say, this boy is a bastard. What do you think is the problem? Maybe the boy is behaving in a way that is strange to him. You say, ah, where did he get all these things he's doing? You can't see it in your mother. You can't see it in my life. Where did you get? This boy is a bastard. So real sonship is not who actually biologically gave birth to you. Real sonship is in who is fathering your manifestation. That's real sonship. So the kind of manifestation you have today who can you trace it to? Is it God or Satan? Whoever you can trace it to is your father. Is somebody hearing me now? So but when Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, he's simply saying, you have fellowship with a God who is light. And you have fellowship with other believers who are also what? Light. And you are forbidden to have fellowship with darkness. You are forbidden to have fellowship with anybody who is who is engaged in the work of what? Darkness. You must not have intimacy with the people that are doing the work of darkness. No fellowship. No interaction. Don't imbibe their spirit. Don't receive their flow. Don't copy their life. Because you are light. You are only permitted to fellowship with what? Light. And God is light. And fellow believers also 
that are light. They are the people you flow together with. I hope you understand that. That's what Jesus is saying. That's how peculiar you are. So it's not every party they invite you to that you can go. I didn't say you shouldn't go to a party, oh, but you'll be selective in your attendance. And when you get to anyone and they are doing anything that is the work of darkness, you excuse yourself. Because light and darkness don't stay together. Did you hear what I just said? It's not everybody you can move with. It's not every society you can belong to. And can I say something? It's not every church you can attend. Oh. We are living in the last days. So oh. Different, different churches are here. You have to be careful. That's what Jesus is saying. You are the light of the world. Don't mix, in, don't mix indiscriminately. Be selective in your fellowship. Fellowship with light. Fellowship with the word of God. Fellowship with the Holy Ghost. It's not everything on Facebook you can, you can look at. Some you will see it once. You don't go back to it. It's not every site you can click. That's what, the, that's what he's saying. Because you are light. Some sites are darkness. Yes or no? Some messages on Facebook are darkness. It's not everything in TikTok or Instagram that should excite you. Because you are light. You must be selective in your fellowship. Fellow, what you fellowship with, what you read, what you eat, what you receive, the flow you flow with, you must be selective. Hello, somebody. May you no longer, may you never live a common life any, any longer. You will not live a common life any longer. You will live a special life, a unique life. The people of the world will say you are proud, but you are not proud. You are just manifesting in line with your identity as what? As light. And the, the beauty of it is that everywhere you show up, light will come. Illumination will come. Godliness will show up. Freedom will show up. Understanding will show up. Wisdom will show up. Everything of God will show up. That's light. Is somebody hearing me now? Praise God. Three, four. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, he's simply saying, you are peculiar. That's what he's saying. How peculiar are you? Write this down. I am ordained to live a life of love and shun hatred. I am ordained to live a life of love and shun hatred. That's how peculiar your life is. We live a life of love. We live a life of love. Amen. Amen. We live, I am ordained to live a life of love and shun hatred. I am ordained to live a life of love and shun hatred. Is that okay? That is how peculiar your life is. How many of you remember this common saying? When somebody is, you know, the Yoruba say, I remember my mom is sorry. Let me tell you. Amen. Amen. We don't use evil to repay evil. It's not in our culture. We don't repay hatred with hatred. It's not in our culture. Did you hear what I'm saying now? We don't use cost to pay back cost. It's not in our culture. Are you hearing me now? We are ordained. Somebody say, I'm ordained to live a life of love and to shun hatred. Say it again. This is, a, this is a world of hatred. I'm telling you. This is a world of jealousy. I'm telling you. Jealousy is the spirit of this world. It's a demonic spirit. People are jealous of many things. Envious of many. They just hate you without you offending them. How many of you know that this word hate progress? Hello? They like you when things are bad. But when you are beginning to progress, they begin, they begin to see, read meaning to it. 
Ah ah. Come on, Shako. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. Are you hearing me now? When they said so and so is dead, somebody said, Wow. May his soul rest in peace. But when they say so and so has gone to America, I said, No, it's a lie. It's a lie. That's the world we are living in. They find it easy to believe that somebody is dead than believing that somebody has come to the U.S. When they hear that your son graduates, you say, ah, what you? What you? Ah. Bolotisi. <laughs> Praise God. So and so has gone, has, has built a house. He has, he has gone to his house. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> what did he say? Last week, ah. It's, it's not possible. If every good thing that people do, some people believe that it's juju that you are using. Whatever you are doing that they don't understand, they say, oh, I don't know. 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 I do Praise God. Praise God. Are you hearing me now? Nobody will see you when you are suffering. But when God begins to establish his faithfulness, people will now begin to see you. And they will now begin to read meaning to you. This is a world of evil. This is a world of hatred. A world where a husband can kill his wife because the wife is progressing. A world where the wife can poison the husband. Because the husband is progressing. A world where siblings, siblings, children of the same father and mother can be looking for each other's downfall. A world where somebody wants to be the one that will, that will now dominate everybody. And every other person will now be doing this to him before they eat. That's, that's how terrible this world is. You know the song we used to sing? No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There is no other one so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. So how much he cared for me. You hear what I said? That's why friends are very, very scarce. Real friends are very, very scarce. If you still call everybody your friend, you don't know the nature of the world you are living in. A world where two so-called friends can be drinking together and one so-called friend will poison the drink of the other one. A world where when you are drinking something and you quickly need to ease yourself, you cannot give your drink to your friend and come back to believe that that drink is not poison. Because several people have done it and they've crossed to the other side. A world where you are traveling and you, your most important friend and you say, this is my wife. I keep my wife in your care. Take care of him till I come back. And by the time you come back, he has taken care of her. He has, he has impregnated her. Have you turned? Are you hearing me now? A word that if they know what you have, if they can see your bank statement, the next thing is how to kill you. The next thing is how to kill you. I told a young man, I said, don't be foolish. Leave three steps downward your real value. Your real worth. He told me recently, he said, sir, I have never forgotten that word. In the light of his recent experience, he said, thank God I obeyed that word. Leave three steps below your real word. Don't show everything that you are. Because the world can't handle your success. It will scatter their brain. Do you hear what I say? Now? But you know what? In the kingdom, 
love is our culture. In this culture, we love. Are you hearing me now? We trust. We love. We shun hatred. We don't hate. We love. We rejoice at good. We care. Now, now look at 1 Corinthians. I want you to see the culture of the kingdom where you are now. That's why the Bible says, you are the light of the world. You are a pay setter. You are a standard setter. What you manifest, the world can't understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We love. I, start, I read from verse 1. When you get back home, you can read in all other verses, all other translations. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity and become a sounding brass or a tinkly cymbal. Now, let me read it in a more modern uh, translation. Which one will I choose between the Passion Translation and the Message Bible? Mommy, which one will I choose between the Passion Translation and the Message Bible? I want you to choose for me Passion Translation. Okay, let's go for Passion. All right? This is what it says. If I were to speak with eloquence in as many languages and in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet I didn't express myself with love, my words will be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. And if I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secret, and if I possess unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be born as a matter without the pure motive of love, I will gain nothing of value. Now listen to how the Bible describes love. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievement, nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated. Or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty. And finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter. For it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat. For it never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Wow. Wow. How many of you now understand what Jesus is saying when he says, ye are the light of the world. You have the things that the world don't have. You have the things that the world can never have. You are higher than them. Don't come to their level. You are a space setter. Your life is capable of setting righteous standards. You operate from the height. You are not operating from the depth. It is an anathema for any child of God to now condescend to the standard and the culture of unrighteousness. 
It is a shame. It is a disgrace. Is somebody hearing me now? That's what Jesus is saying. Now look at 1 John chapter 2. I read verse 8 to 11. In fact, I want all of us to read this together. 1 John chapter 2, verse 8 to 11. Are we there? One, two, go. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that said that he is, he that see, he that see it, he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abided in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother, he is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I hope you got it this morning. When Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world, he is simply saying, You are peculiar, you are different. You are not common. You are distinctive. You, you are not cheap. You are not general. You are not normal. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 5. I'm switching to the last part of my teaching. Matthew chapter 5. We've done verse 13. We've done verse 14. We've done verse 15. Now let's begin to look at verse 16. Are you there? Let's read verse 16 together. Why don't you go? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. So what I'm doing first is let your light so shine before men. Somebody say let. Say allow. Allow your light. Let your light. It's not what God will do for you. It's what you should do for yourself. Let your light so shine. One thing, one key to interpreting the Bible, especially to interpret the statements that came directly from the mouth of Jesus, is to find out what exactly is that statement implicating. When Jesus said, let your light so shine, what exactly is he saying? Because every statement of Jesus is heavy with meaning. He's saying many things. He's saying many things. Is somebody hearing me now? That's why if you, go, if you are a student of the epistle, you will have amplifications of the statement of Jesus. Is somebody hearing me now? Because if Jesus says go, it means many, many things. It goes beyond the literal go. Is pregnant with meaning and implications. So when you read the epistles, you will now see the amplifications, the many-sided interpretations and implications of the statement of Jesus. And that is what will inform your comprehension, obedience, understanding, and manifestation. Is somebody hearing me now? There are many people carrying the Bible who don't know what it says. And as much as we don't know what he says, our manifestations will be limited. Your manifestation is after your, the order of your revelation. It's after the order of your revelation. You can't manifest beyond your revelation. And that's why in these last days, we need more anointed ex explanation. Anointed explanation of scripture. So that we can boost our understanding. We can boost our revelation. And our obedience can be complete. 
and our manifestation can be accurate. Is somebody here in Mina? Let's read verse 16 together again. One, two, go. Let your light so shine before men. That's okay. That's okay. That's the one I'm dealing with first. Later, I will look at that they may see your good works. And then I will look at and glorify your Father in heaven. Break it into three parts. So, let your life so shine before men. There are many things that Jesus was saying indirectly to his disciple and to all those who will believe in him. Those who would later become member of his kingdom. When he said, let your light so shine before men. What was he doing? Hello? He was charging and summoning his disciples. Then and now. Number one. Write it down. To live a life of purpose. When he said, let your light so shine before men. What is he saying? He's charging us to live a life of purpose. To live a life of godly focus. Only a life of purpose can so shine before men. Only a life of godly focus can so shine before men. So when he said, let your light so shine before men, it was charging us to live a life of righteous conviction. Write it down. It was charging us to live a life of radiant example. It was charging us to live a life of radiant example. And it was charging us to live a life of anointed model. There are five descriptions I used. Let the Holy Ghost download its meaning into your spirit. When he says, let your light so shine before men. What is he saying? Live a life of purpose. Live a life of godly focus. Live a life of righteous conviction. Live a life of radiant example. Live a life of anointed model. Did you hear me? That's the meaning. Number two. When he said, let your light so shine before men. What is Jesus saying? He was charging us to live a worthy life. Worthy life. I'm using those words very intentionally. To live a worthy life. To live a godly life. To live a godly life. To live a sound life. A sound life. To live a righteously influential life. A righteously influential life. You know some people are politically influential. Some people are economically influential. But God is looking for people who will be righteously influential. And that's you as a believer. Hello somebody. Only a life that is with righteous influence can so shine before men. And then he was charging us to live a challenging life. Somebody say challenging life. Let your life challenge others to serve God. Let your life challenge others to live a holy life. Let your life challenge others to obey God. Let your life challenge others to believe in God. Let your life challenge others to do the things of God. Let your life challenge others to come to church. Let your life challenge others to be a believer. He was charging us to live a challenging life. Let your life challenge others to serve God. It pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart. He's always be with us if we do our part. There is not in this wide world and pleasure afford. There is peace and contentment in serving the Lord. I love him far better than in days of yours. 
I serve him more truly than ever before. I'll do as he beats me, whatever the call. I'll be a true soldier, steadfast at my pole. That's a challenging life. That when other people look at your life, they are challenged to serve God. Don't live a life that will discourage other people from serving God. That people will say, if it is only your church that is left, I won't go to church again. Don't be a somebody that will chase other people from church because of your behavior. Let your life so shine. Number three. When he said, let your life so shine before men. What is he saying? He was charging us to resist the negative influence and ungodly tendencies of our world and environment. Resist the negative influence and ungodly tendencies of our world and our environment. That's what he's saying. Until you resist the negative influence and ungodly tendencies of our world and our environment, your life cannot shine before men. Resist. Dare to resist. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego resisted the ungodly tendency of their day. That was why their light shined before men. Yes or no? Daniel did the same thing. He resisted. Don't be a follow, follow. Every ungodly tendency, every negative influence in our world and around your environment, stand out. Resist it. Dare to be different. I told you over and over. When you cannot beat them, stand out. Don't join them. When he said, let your light so shine before men, he was challenging us. To resist the temptation to surrender our life to godless chances. To resist the temptation to surrender our life to satanic and lustful manipulations. Don't let, the, don't let lust lead you. Don't submit your life to lustful and satanic manipulation. Don't surrender your life to godless chances. That's what he says. When he says, let your life so shine before men. Jesus Christ is directly saying, don't let life lead you. Don't let life lead you. Take responsibility for your personal life and actions. Ma yasi bita warabi yasi. Shogba, don't let life lead you. Let the word of God lead you. Let the purpose of God lead you. Let the principles of God lead you. Don't let life lead you. Everybody is doing it, so I have to do it. If you do what everybody is doing, your life can never shine before men. Hello? Before your life can so shine before men, something must be different about you. Number five. When he said, let your life so shine before men, he's charging us to reject carelessness, to reject frivolity, to reject slackness about how you live your life. He's charging us to be righteously deliberate. To be decisive. To be purposeful. To be selective. Oh yes. He's charging you to reject carelessness. To reject frivolity. To reject slackness about how you live your life. To be righteously deliberate. To be decisive. When you say no, you say no to sin. You don't look back again. Decisive. What you are not going to eat, you will not smell it. Decisive. Decisive. 
to be purposeful and selective. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Beloved, say after me, I'm a believer. I cannot live like other people. I'm a standard setter. I'm a pace setter. I cannot conduct myself anyhow in the world. Please say it after me. I'm a believer. I cannot live my life anyhow. I'm different. I'm unique. I'm a standard setter. My life is capable of setting godly standards. I cannot be careless. And I'll give you six reasons why. Because, write this down. I want you to personalize it because it's going to help you to remember. Number one, I have received the revelation of the Father and the grace of Jesus Christ. I have received the revelation of the Father and the grace of Jesus Christ. That's number one. That's why I cannot be careless. That's why I cannot conform myself to the world. That's why I must stand out anywhere I go. That's why life must not lead me. It is the word of God that must be leading me. It is the principles of God that must be leading me. It is the counsel of God that must be leading me. Not the counsel of men. I have received the revelation of the Father and the grace of Jesus Christ. That's why you are the light of the world. The people of the world have not received the revelation of Jesus Christ. They have not received the grace of Jesus Christ. But you have received. This is a treasure that money cannot buy. I have received the revelation of the Father and the grace of Jesus. Number two, because I am a part of Jesus Christ's own people. And I'm not in the kingdom by accident. I'm a part of Jesus Christ's own people. When they call you SU, you should jump off and go and do Thanksgiving in church. The word think is a derogatory uh, name. It's not derogatory. It is your identity. When they say SU, scripture union, Jesus people, that's who you are. Somebody say, I'm a Jesus man. Somebody say, I'm a Jesus man. If you're a lady, you say, I'm a Jesus lady. That's why one big car cannot park, 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 park on the road and say, hello lady, get in my way. Tell me I'm a Jesus lady. Go away. You hear what I say? Because what they know that the word, when they say, oh, one more, one more, one more, one more, tell him, Jesus, let me I'm a Jesus lady. Are you hearing me now? I'm a Jesus man. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Jesus man. Oh yes, I'm a Jesus man. 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 I've got to places where where people where there are I yeah, I will be the time I sing to see a time I see over any OTC. I'm a Jesus man. Let me go to be Jesus the Mugbo. Oh, but you don't see you are your ball like Barry. Me or Rina or Ribo Bunton, she rather die. I'm a Jesus man. Me or yeah. You hear what I say? I'm a Jesus man. I'm a Jesus man. Are you hearing me now? I'm not looking for another wife. It's not because I'm not a human being. Are you hearing me now? It's not because we don't have people in my family that have two wives, three wives. Are you hearing me? But because I am a Jesus man. One marriage is enough for my lifetime. I'm not looking for another one. You get what I'm saying now? I'm a Jesus man. I'm a Jesus man. Come on, say, I'm a Jesus man. Say, I'm a Jesus woman. Say, I'm a Jesus girl. Say, I'm a Jesus boy. Say, I'm a Jesus student. Talk to me. Say, I'm a Jesus student. You are part of God's... You are part... I am part of Jesus Christ's own people. And I am not in the kingdom by accident. He died for me. Number three. Why your home must be different? Why you are not... 
you can't live a careless life. I have known Jesus Christ individually. And Christ knows what he has called me to do. That's number three. I have known Jesus Christ personally. And Christ knows what he has called me to do. Is that okay? I've known Jesus Christ personally. And Christ knows what he has called me to do. Number four. I am to fulfill Christ's purpose. Of beaming the gospel light to the world in which I live. I am to fulfill Christ's purpose. Of beaming the gospel light. To the world in which I live. That's my business in the world. As a lecturer in the school, in the university, in the polytechnic, you are to fulfill the purpose of Christ by beaming the gospel light into the world in which you live. As a banker in the bank, as a lawyer in the court, as a doctor in the hospital, anywhere you find yourself, Content as a teacher in the school, as a civil servant, I am to fulfill the purpose of Christ by beaming the light of the gospel into the world in which I live. Let that be more real to you than your accounting work. Let that be more real to you than your legal services. Let that be more real to you than your medical services. Let that be more real to you than your engineering profession. Use every other profession and platform and opportunities to do what? To fulfill the purpose of Christ of beaming the gospel light to the world in which you live. It's not only the pastor that should do the beaming of the gospel light. It's not only the apostle, the evangelist, the teachers that should do it. Every believer should do it. Ye are the light of the world. Beam the gospel light into the world you live in. How many of you know that this song I'm going to sing is a song embedded in scriptural prophecy? And this song will never become a reality until every believer becomes the light of the world. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it will be. All over the world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. How many of you know that song? Let's rise up and sing that song. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it will be. All over the world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over the world, all over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the Sing it again. All over the world, ah, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said.
said it will be. All over the world lies a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters covered us. I hope you know the meaning of the song we are singing. That song is a product of scriptural prophecy. But that song will never become a reality. That prophecy will never be fulfilled. If only the pastors are light of the world. If only the evangelists are light of the world. If it is only the teachers, the apostles, that are light of the world. That song will be fulfilled. That prophecy will be a reality. That the knowledge of God will be as the what as this as the waters cover the sea when believers are becoming what the light of the world our job is not only to come to church we come to church for training we go to the world to beam the gospel light is somebody hearing me now we say after me i come to church for training I go to the wall to beam the gospel light. Let them know you as a special student. The gospel light in where in your, in your school. The gospel light in your place of work. You are beaming that light. Your life is beaming the light. Are you hearing me now? We are going to sing that song again. There is another one that the Holy Ghost is trying to, the Holy Ghost is bringing up in my spirit. I will get it now. Are you hearing me now? We will go to brighten the corner where you are. Are you hearing me now? You are going to, you are going to go and beam the light. Did you hear what I say now? The gospel light. Somebody say the gospel light. There is one that say that blessed gospel light. Let it shine. La 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 la. That blessed gospel light. Let it shine. La, 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 la. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine. La, 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 la. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine. La, 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 la. I don't know the beginning, but the Holy Ghost is just bringing it. I want it only to one year. Only that came out of message. The song that came out of the move of the Holy Ghost. Not the useless song that they are singing today. Da 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 La la la, la 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 la. I think the beginning is we have heard the gospel light. Send the light, la la la. Send the light, la la la, la 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 la. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine. From shore to shore, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. I'm praying to God that you will go in this enablement by knowledge and grace to beam the gospel light wherever you go in the name of Jesus. That when people see your life without opening the Bible, Without opening the Bible, they will begin to know the purpose of God. They will see the light of God. Oh, yes, this is it. There is a call comes ringing over the restless waves. Send the light, send the light. 
There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the Lord. Send the Lord. Send the Lord. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the Lord. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. We have had the Macedonian call today. Send the Lord, send the Lord. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the Lord, send the Lord, send the Lord. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the Lord. Our Lord is radiant, beam, land alive forevermore. Let us pray that grace be everywhere about. Send the Lord, send the Lord. And the Christ like spirit everywhere be found. Send the Lord, send the Lord, send the Lord. The blessed gospel light, let it shine. From shore to shore, send the light and let it with your beam light the world forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the walk of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let it radiant beam light the world forevermore. This is a song that we have learned since 1983-84. And can you imagine that I'm preaching here in 2024 and the Holy Ghost brought it in my spirit? Those who compose this song have listened to serious messages like this. Because most believers are just joking. We are just joking. You are a failure to God. You are a complete failure. All that, all, all, all that Christianity is reduced to today is Kele Atifila, Atisut, Atitai. I want Christian to learn to let you not be shy. I want to show for for you. I want to show for you. We now have believers who are boyfriend girlfriend. There are some believers today, so called, that their life is not safe to emulate. You emulate them, you go to hell. That's not the purpose of God. That's not the plan of God. That was not the intention of God. When Jesus stood before his disciples and said, Ye are the light of the world. I pray for you. May your life not disappoint divine expectation. Why would God have you there? And there is no righteous standard. Reason one of my one, I do go. One of classify a man, one of shake bell, I do go in. I'm praying for you that as you leave this mentoring school, you will be going consciously to beam the gospel light. Beam the gospel light. Beam the gospel light. Beam the... Do you know that is something they do in our secondary school today? They call it a shade. How many of you remember that? That particular day, it is to call people's consciousness to the native dressing. The culture and you know, you see people who dress with native and all that. Because they believe that we're almost losing our job. Are you hearing me now? Every day must be the gospel day. For you as a believer. Every day. Somebody say every day must be the gospel day. As you go, send the light. Send the light. The gospel light. The blessed gospel light. Beam it to everywhere, everywhere. 
The world cannot know the knowledge of God if only the pastors are the one preaching. If only the evangelists are the one doing crusade. Today we now have a body of Christ that is filled with stars, 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 stars. I want stars why Nicola share. What happens to our members? The Bible didn't say ye pastors are the light of the world. Did it say so? Did it say ye general overseers are the only light of the world? Did it say so? He said, Ye are what? Are the light of the world. May we not fail in our primary assignment. Today we have people that they are ashamed to be a believer. They are ashamed to be a believer. You cannot live a careless life because you are to fulfill Christ's purpose of what? Beaming the gospel light to the world in which you live. Is that okay? Is that okay? When I was teaching in the secondary school, all my students know, they know this is a man of God, this is a pastor. I teach biology. As at that time, it was a general class. Biology was as general as mathematics and English. I have a way of introducing my topics. And I have a way of ending my topic and connecting it to Christ. Most of my students are in big, big places today. Some of them outside the country. And they still remember. Call. So then we call. Thank you. I went to minister as was since last year in Benin. And one of my old students got to know that I was coming to Benin. And he connected with me. Traced me to the hotel where I stayed. And he said, sir, what you taught us in the fellowship in those days is what I'm still using. I taught him over 20 years ago. Beam the light. You have a shop. People are coming there every day to buy things. Show them the gospel. Show them the gospel light. You are the light of the world. Every opportunity should be a platform for you to beam the gospel light. 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 Every blessing that God brings into your life is to make it easy for you to beam the gospel light. Is somebody here me now? It's to make it easier for you to be in the gospel life. We must read life in the perspective of the purpose of Christ. What's the purpose of Christ? That we be the gospel light. May we be senders of light. May we not be promoters of darkness. May we be senders of light. May we be senders of light. When I was serving in Edo State, that school, they don't have fellowship there. I created a fellowship before I left. And to the glory of God, both staff and students, everybody were part of that fellowship. I do that fellowship every Thursday. It was that fellowship that somebody saw in town and they invited me to a church in town. And I was ministering in that church every Wednesday. And that Wednesday, many, many of our students and, and staff, real staff, because I was a copper then, they would come to that church. It's not their traditional church, but because I'm ministering there, they will come there. God will always create platform for you, but make sure you use it to beam light. The gospel light. Is somebody here in me now. That's the meaning of ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. I told you sometimes you are marking your bad day. What, what, of, what, what, what gospel light will, you, will your bad day be to the world?
Some of you can remember. Told you, you want to mark a milestone bad day. You want to be 50. You want to be 60. You are marking 70th bad day. I've taught you. Organize it in a way. Don't just organize it around eating and drinking and taking photographs. Let's have a service for you. That your friends will come to church. Will minister. Will teach them the word of God. Let souls be saved because you are having your bad day. Not just Facebook something. I'm not against it. Are you hearing me? But when you are planning it, let there, let, let there be an opportunity to beam the gospel light. In your wedding recession, it shouldn't be all dance, 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 dance. Let there be an opportunity to beam the gospel light. Is somebody hearing me now? In your welcome party, your graduation party, your whatever, let that be an opportunity. Create platforms to beam the gospel light in everything you are doing. That's where we are the light of the world. Sit down. Let me finish this teaching. Number what now? Check your note. Why you cannot behave anyhow? Why you are different? Which number now? Number five. Because I am favored and privileged to receive the manifold revelations of the truth from Jesus Christ and his word. Because I am favored and privileged. I am favored and privileged to receive the manifold revelation of the truth from Jesus Christ and his word. I am favored and privileged to receive the manifold revelation of the truth from Jesus Christ and his word. Blessed are your ears for the things you are hearing. Do you know not everybody is hearing what you are hearing? Do you know? Somebody, are you hearing me? All these teachings you are hearing, do you know not everybody is hearing it? Blessed are you for what you are hearing. You are favored. Somebody say, I am favored. Somebody say, I am privileged to receive the manifold revelation of the truth from Jesus Christ and from his word. And number six, I cannot be careless. I cannot live anyhow. I'm different. I'm special. I'm unique. Because I have a compelling responsibility brought upon my life because of the revelation and experiences I receive from the teachings of Jesus Christ. I have a compelling responsibility brought upon my life because of the revelations and experiences I receive from the teachings of Jesus Christ. In the language of the Bible, especially Paul, he said, necessity is laid upon me. You cannot live an irresponsible life. You cannot live a careless life. Let your light so shine. Let's read Matthew 5.16. Are we here? Let's read Matthew 5.16 together. Are you ready? One, two, go. Let your light so shine before men. That's okay. Let your light so what? So shine before men. I want you to underline the word so. Underline the word so. That word so is reflecting the degree of your shining before men. To what degree are you supposed to shine? To what degree are you supposed to shine? Is that okay? To what degree are you supposed to shine? 
let your light so shine before men. Somebody say, so shine. Somebody say, so shine. Not everybody is talking. Say, so shine. That is talking about the degree of your shining. Now, I'm going to end on this point, and I'm going to pray for everybody. The two other parts, I will take it in the next little light. The two other parts is that they may see your what? Your good works. And then what? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Is that, is that okay? Leading light is when? Every last Saturday of the month. Not this month now. Next month. I'll take this, the other part. Because if I say I should take it today now. I won't have time to do the prayers I want to pray with you. I'm also I have a rest in my spirit that the message for this mentoring school has been passed successfully. Yes. And I'm believing God that you have gotten the message that God wants you to get in this mentoring school. That is that knowing in the spirit that tells you that this, the work is done. That the job is done. What you do with it is your personal responsibility. And everybody will give account of the teaching that you are hearing. Every one of us will give account of our teaching. Of the teachings you are hearing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Just as I will give account of the grace of God in my life. You will give account of all the teachings you are hearing. The word so in the statement of Jesus. Let your light so shine before men. Reveals the degree to which your light must shine. Now as a believer, write this down. You must allow your light to shine to a very high degree. You must allow your light to shine, your light to shine to a very high degree. That's the meaning of let it so shine. Let it what? So shine. Don't let it barely shine. Let it so shine. So let your light shine to a very high degree. Number two, let your light shine to a great extent. To a great extent. Let your light shine to a great extent. To a great extent. That nobody will, nobody will be in doubt as to your light. Number three. Let your light shine to an extraordinary level. Let your light shine to an extraordinary level. All the people that say your own is too much. They don't know, they don't know this scripture. If they know that scripture, they will, they will know that you have not even done enough. Let your light shine to an extraordinary level. And number next, let your light shine with a higher quality of brightness. Let your light shine with, an S, with a higher quality of what? Of brightness. Those of you that are, if you, the televisions you have in your home, you know you can, you can regulate the sharpness of the light. Am I correct? The picture, you can regulate the sharpness. Even your phone. You can recognize how sharp, how, how bright it can be. Am I correct? Okay? The only thing is that it will consume your battery faster. <laughs> Amen? Let your light shine with a bright, higher quality of brightness. And number next, let your light shine with a higher quality of intensity. That's the meaning of let your light so shine. In righteousness, in godliness, in the service of the Lord, it is too much. 
let your light so shine. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Some people say your own is too much. When they, you was, must, you must know that you have not started. Though. Don't let them say your own is too much. You have not even started. Some people are doing better than you are doing. Some people's light are shining better than you are doing. There are people that are medical doctor. They are on score. They are consultant. They are pastors. They are steward. And they are still juggling everything together for Jesus. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Don't say, I've done enough. You have not done enough. Oh. There are other scriptures where the word so was used. And it reveals and expresses extraordinary qualities of virtue. Or superlative emphasis on a thing. I'll give you an example. Matthew chapter 6. Let's read from verse 30 to 32. Are we together? Matthew chapter 6. From verse 30. We're going to read it together. I want you to take note of the word soul. We talks about extraordinary qualities of virtue. Or superlative emphasis on a thing. So it's not only in Matthew 5 16 that Jesus used so. He used so. That word so is to tell you the degree of your shining. Are you in Matthew chapter 6? Let's start from verse 30. You want to go? Wherefore, if God so, did you see that? So clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the field, into the oval. Shall it not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, Where we do shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. You see the soul in verse 30, isn't it? Talk to me now. Look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. Everybody go there. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. Are you there? Let's read together. Everybody, one, two, go. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Very I say unto you, I have not found what? So great faith. No, not in Israel. You see, that was so. Go to John chapter 3 verse 16. Very, very common scripture. Everybody, at least you should be able to read that one without even opening your Bible. One, two, go. For God so, you see the soul there? So love the world. So love the world. It tells you the degree of that love. The degree of that. So when the Bible says, let your light so shine, it's not talking about a shining at a mediocre level. But he's talking about a shining at the highest excellent level. So, what have you done? What have you done for Jesus? That you are beginning to think you have done well. What have you done? What have you done? When you see other people's plates, you will know that you are yet to start. Are you hearing me now? Let your light so shine in your church. When they want to do this, they call you. When they want to do that, they call you. When they want to do that, you can You now feel, hey, Pastor, you're in the bathroom. They won't allow me to rest. Who are you? When you should be celebrating that your light is shining so well, let your light so shine. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. 
every opportunity for your light to shine. Embrace it. Grab it. Use it faithfully. Thank God for it. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verse 1. Out of the Apostles, chapter 14, verse 1. Are you there? Let's read together. One, two, go. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake. Choba. And so speak to a higher degree that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greek, believed. Look at 1920, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 19, verse 20. I hope you are following me. Chapter 19, verse 20. Somebody say, uh, uh, Our own is too much in this church. Teaching, teaching, teaching. We have not even started. What did I say? We have not even started. I have not even started. So, let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Mommy, give me my, my let, let me have my phone. The message that somebody sent to me around to 12 yesterday. Because as we are here, some other people are also online. In fact, there is a whole church that is setting, joining us online in Elisha. They gather all their members together. They have been following us since Thursday. So the attendance is not only the people that are here on ground. There are a lot of people listening. Let your light so shine. We must take advantage, every advantage that we have to ensure that the light so shine. I don't know how you can be in a church for one year, two years. You are not serving God. You are not a steward. You are not, they suspend you. You are not even making effort to come back after suspension. Something is wrong with you. You misbehave and they suspended you. And you are not even making any effort to return. For them to restore you. You think it's the upper church. I pity your life. Let your life so shine. Let your light so shine. This message came in 8 minutes to 12 in the midnight. He said, good evening, sir. Just finished listening to this teaching. That is the teaching we took yesterday. Wow. I bless the name of the Lord for the opportunity to be part of this. 90% of our churches avoid this type of teachings. Sir, may the Lord continue to make us the light of the world and let our life truly expose the destructive agenda of the devil and amplifying the redemptive agenda of Jesus. You know that that person actually listened to the teaching. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Today now, I can afford to go and sleep. And say, good Friday, everybody go and sleep. But we've been on since the day before yesterday. Teaching, 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 teaching. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. My ever fee is shall do a shako. Anybody fee shall do a shako, my tenure. Anything God, don't, it's a privilege. Did you hear what I say? A serious privilege. Every opportunity to shine the light of Jesus. Take it serious. 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 Okay? 1920, are you there? At 1920. One to go. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So, you see that so? As a believer, I want you to write down Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. You read it when you get home. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. Then Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. And chapter 2, verse 3. I want us to read that Hebrew. Hebrews.
Write Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. But I want us to read chapter 2 verse 3. I want us to start to read from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1. And I want every one of us to read it. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1. Let your light so shine. What are you doing with your page on Facebook? I expect that all these teachings, all the teachings, all the messages, you will share it on your page. That's part of becoming the light. Share it. Send it to your Instagram, your TikTok, whatever. What are you using your TikTok to do? To dance useless dance. Are you hearing me now? Let's start to read from verse 1. One to go. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation. As I round up, as a believer, the floodlight of your life must have a supernatural effect on people. The floodlight of your life must have a supernatural effect on people. The light that shines from your life must be with inexhaustible oil of grace. The light that shines from your life must be with inexhaustible oil of love. And of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying for you. That it will be clear to heaven. That you came to this world. Your life will not be like a snake. That passed through the rock. That has no part. son. May your life have a mark for Jesus. A mark for God. How many of you I watched a particular video that Baba Kumuyi did. Was talking about the way some people are complaining that what is, what is this, uh, this old men? What are they still looking for? What is Kumuyi looking for? What is Adeboe looking for? They should go and rest. They should go and relax. He said, but we will not rest. We will not relax. At over 80, he's doing GCK all around. Gospel crusade with Kumuyi. At over 80. At over 80. And go and take note. I want to say a lot to that level. That's the secret of their longevity. Are you hearing me now? That's the secret of their longevity. At over 80. That man is still standing up preaching very hard messages. If you see his shadow. You will wonder if you are alive. You will wonder if you are alive. And this is what he has been doing for more than 50 years. And he's still doing it. Ah. Is he not a human being? Let your light so shine. 
He said he will preach till he die. No rest, no retirement. We don't retire from God's purpose. Hello? We don't retire. We don't retire. We don't retire. We will preach on Sunday. We will preach on Monday. We will preach on Tuesday. We will preach on Thursday. We will preach on Friday. He will do preparatory class for teachers on Saturday. He will preach on Sunday at 80. And he's going about preaching crusade. The crusade. You are... The assignment they gave you, you didn't do it well. And you feel you are doing somebody. Rise up on your feet. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. I want to be married in to encourage you. Emil. Don't take a negative example from the world. Old people still serving God consistently, still serving Jesus. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. I want you to pray that your light will not become darkness. Are you hearing me? I want you to pray that my light will not become darkness. Lord, help me. My light will not become darkness. I will not be an agent of darkness. I'll be an herald for light. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. No more excuses. Open your mouth and begin to pray. No more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. If you still have excuses, your light is not shining so well. There will always be excuses, but you must kill those excuses. Nothing will stop me from serving God. Nothing will stop my light from shining. Nothing again will stop me from beaming the gospel light. I will no longer waste opportunity again. Every opportunity for my life to shine, I will embrace it. I will embrace it. Everywhere I've made mistake, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Open my eyes that I may see. Everywhere I've made mistake in this regard, have mercy upon me. Lord, give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. Open your mouth and pray. I will serve you with all my life, with all my time, with all my energy, with all my strength. No more mistakes, no more excuses, no more barriers. In the name of Jesus, I will justify the redemption purchased by the blood of Jesus. I will not be a waste in the kingdom. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Now my light will not become darkness. Everywhere where I am, I will be a light of Jesus. The light of the word of God will shine through my life. Help me, Lord. Every area of mistake, have mercy upon me. Let my, my light will so shine. This life you have given me. Help me, Lord. I choose to brighten the corner where I am. Lord, I choose to be a better representative of Jesus wherever I am. Open your mouth and pray. That is what the Lord said he is doing in this meeting. That by knowledge and grace, you will be a better representative of Jesus on the earth. There is no time for all sweet, sweet messages. This is the real gospel. This is the meat of the son. The food of the son. Not for babies. I will justify redemption. 
they will see Christ in me as from today. Open your mouth and pray. Men and women everywhere will see Christ in me. As from today, I begin to see myself as an ambassador of Jesus, a representative of Jesus. Anywhere I am, I will be more conscious. I receive grace to be more conscious that I'm a representative of Jesus. That men will see the light of Jesus in my life. People will not reject Jesus because of my carelessness. I receive grace to be sober. I receive grace to be careful. I receive grace of commitment. I receive grace to live a distinctive life. I receive grace to live a peculiar life, a godly life, a righteous life, a purposeful life, a worthy life, a worthy life, a life that is safe to emulate. Lord, I receive that grace today. Everywhere I've made mistakes, everywhere I've misled people about my life, have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus. It's a new day, oh Lord. A new day, a new beginning. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. I believe much of the other prayer, you will go and pray it on your own. I've done what the Lord asked me to do. I want to pray for you now. We're entering a very serious season as Christians on the earth. And all the messages we are hearing, they've recorded it in heaven. So there will be no excuse that I don't know. I'm praying that these words will bless you. These words will be a help to you to live a better life. As you go, I want you to be more conscious of your life as a believer. Know that you are not common. Know that you are not general. Know that you are not normal. Don't equate yourself with any other unbeliever. You are special in the hands of God. And you, are, you must be deliberate about the life you are living because people are reading your life. You are looking at your life. Let what they read in your life lead them to Jesus. Be conscious. God is expecting you to live by a higher standard. The standard is very high. The stakes are very high. Because we don't have too much time. Time is short. This is the time that those who are married should behave as if they are not married. This is the time that those who have, who have education should behave as if they don't have. Those who are rich should behave as if they, don't, they, 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 they are not rich. This is the time to focus on becoming the light of the world. That you will go and be the light of Jesus. Your life will be different. Your life will challenge people to Jesus. To live righteous life. You set a righteous standard. You will not be a disappointment to God's expectation. You will be a fulfillment. Your life will be a fulfillment of the expectation of God. Put your two hands on your head. I want to pray with you. It's an impartation that is going with you. It's an impartation that is going with you. Your Christian life will be better than it is, than it has ever been. That grace will be released upon you even from now to be a better representative of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of God rest upon you. May these teachings never leave your spirit. That you go back to it again and again and again and again. That this 2024 Mentoring School, the first edition, will make a lasting impact upon your life. In the name of Jesus. May you live to the standard of your identity as the light of the world. The darkness of the world will not influence you. The darkness of the world will not overcome you. You will shine as light. Your light will so shine among men. Your life will be useful for Jesus useful for the word of God. You will be a bright example, a radiant example, a righteous example, a godly example, a peace setter, a unique believer. In the name of Jesus, you live by love. You will not allow life to lead you. You allow the word of God to lead you, the principle of the word of God to lead you. In the name of Jesus. I pray that all these teachings will become your personal experience, your personal encounter. Beyond this mentoring school, the Holy Ghost will teach you in the name of Jesus. Total transformation. Total transformation. Total transformation.
total transformation. Total transformation. No more carelessness. No more frivolity. You will no longer forget who you are. And you will no longer forget what you are to do. Every platform that God has given you, you will turn them to opportunities to beam the light of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we will be living our life consciously, deliberately, bringing glory to God, that our light will so shine before men. They will see our good works and they will glorify our Father in heaven. Thank you, Father. I pray that the blessing of the Lord will rest upon you. The hand of God will be strong on your behalf. The blood of Jesus will speak perpetually over your life. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. May you be specially separated unto God, specially preserved for his purpose in these last days. Your life will not disappoint divine expectation. Your life will fulfill divine expectation in the name of Jesus. This fire will not die in your spirit. It will keep burning and burning and burning and burning until the brighter day. May your path be like the shining light that shines more and more, more and more knowledge of God, more and more of the glory of God, more and more of the discipline of faith, more and more of the righteousness of God coming upon you. You will not be overwhelmed by the world. May you be preserved from the corruption in the world, from the compromise of the world, from the perversion in the world. May the sickness of the world not get upon your life. May you stand out as a standard for Jesus, a space setter for God and for his kingdom. Thank you, Father. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. The mark of the Lord Jesus be upon you perpetually. You are shielded. You are blessed. You are preserved. You are helped. You are favored. You are fortified. By December, we will be here together in good health, in strength, and in the joy of the Lord. Between now and then, go and shine and beam the light of the gospel with every opportunity and at every corner. You will not die. We will not die. We shall live and declare the works of the Lord. With long life, he satisfies us and he shows us his salvation. No sickness will disturb you. No disease will disturb you. No infirmity or weakness of any kind. No evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling place. You are a perfected instrument of God. A battle axe for God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed, blessed be the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray.